one of the most beloved components of all good action flicks has got to be exploding cars. And it's not a new movie trope either. Seeing motors engulfed in massive fireballs appears to never get old, and is a reliable source of the carnage and chaos that makes action movies so darn entertaining. On screen, it generally doesn't take much to make a car go boom. But while it might seem logical that a damaged vehicle could erupt in spectacular fashion, how likely is it to happen in reality? Or, perish the thought, is Hollywood lying to us yet again? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. To get to the heart of this question, we need to start with the absolute basics. How does an explosion actually work? Well, scientifically, an explosion is simply a rapid expansion in volume, usually gas. This can cause a significant spike in air pressure that propagates outwards in all directions as a shockwave. As it happens, most cars are themselves propelled by small explosions, happening thousands of times a minute inside their internal combustion engines. To work, an internal combustion engine mixes gasoline vapour and air inside several chambers, providing the fuel and oxygen required to ignite when exposed to sparks provided by the spark plugs. When the fuel, which is made up of hydrocarbons, burns, it reacts with oxygen from the air. In this reaction, bonds within the hydrocarbons are broken, and new bonds form, producing carbon dioxide and water. This process releases energy rapidly in the form of heat and light, an explosion. This explosion then moves a piston, the piston turns the crankshaft, the crankshaft turns the wheel, et voila, forward motion. Given that an automobile has the capacity to produce mini-explosions, it might seem logical that they have the potential to create the sorts of explosions you see in movies. Vehicles blown apart and satisfyingly destroyed along with any unfortunate passengers. Action movies frequently present motor vehicles as though they're fairly prone to exploding, needing only a small amount of damage or a minor malfunction in some key areas to blow sky high. So, how realistic is this? The short answer is not very. Frankly, there isn't anything in cars themselves that would enable them to detonate like a bomb. First of all, a car's engine is a precision machine that is in the business of creating lots and lots of small, controlled explosions, not massive, uncontrollable ones. Any damage to the internal parts of a car's engine is only going to break the engine's mechanisms and prevent the explosions that power your car, not intensify them. And while you might assume that the gasoline, aka petrol, in a car could potentially explode quite easily, the ubiquitous vehicular fuel is not actually quite as eruptive as the movies might have you believe. Outside of the engine, gasoline is found within the tank and fuel lines, mostly in liquid form. And while liquid gasoline is indeed highly flammable and obviously extremely dangerous in a crash scenario, it's not explosive. Gasoline vapors will ignite and explode only when mixed with air at concentrations of between 1.3 and 7.1%. This means that if the concentration is below 1.3%, known in car talk as being too lean, or above 7.1%, aka too rich, the vapors will not explode. In your average car's fuel tank, the atmospheric concentration of gasoline vapors in the space above the liquid fuel is far too rich, with very little oxygen present, regardless of how full it is, and without an external source of heat, the vapours would not ignite anyway. However, there is of course an exception to the norm, which we'll discover in a moment. If you enjoy learning about scientific topics like engineering and chemical reactions, there's a free, easy and interactive way to continue your learning path. Instead of doom scrolling through social media when you have 5 minutes spare time, why not make use of that time and exercise your brain with the Brilliant app? a fun educational tool that focuses on science and math courses in the form of games and puzzles. And don't go thinking this is an app only for academic achievers either. I'm a big fan of Brilliant because they have similar values to us here at Debunked. We try to make complicated and often daunting topics easy to follow and understand, wrapped in relatable and enjoyable content. 
Brilliant do exactly the same, but in an interactive way. You can tailor your learning journey to your own skill level by taking a quick quiz when you sign up, and you'll be matched with content that fits your skill level and interests. You can opt to exercise your mind in short 5-minute bursts, but before you know it, you'll be doing 15 minutes a day mastering concepts that you thought were unfeasible before. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash debunked, or click on my link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Right, let's get back to those combusting chemical reactions. Under certain crash conditions, if the fuel tank ruptured during impact, it could release gasoline vapors, which would then quickly mix with air and reduce its concentration levels. A spark from, say, an electrical malfunction caused by the impact could then ignite the vapor, and flames would spread quickly as the remaining fuel sprayed out of the tank. This is what happened during the infamous Pinto crash tests of the 1970s. The fire caused during rear impacts were due to an avoidable design defect relating to the positioning of the car's fuel tank. This obviously gained a lot of negative publicity, but the subsequent crash tests performed by the NHTSA were done under worst-case scenarios to illustrate the defect. The tests were effectively set up much like a movie stunt to try and make the target car catch fire. Each test varied, but the ones that caused a fire involved a bullet car, in this case a large heavy sedan traveling at 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. With the nose of the car weighted down, this was presumably to simulate braking, but it also enabled the nose to slide underneath the Pinto's rear and directly hit its gasoline tank. In addition, the bullet car's headlights were switched on to provide an ignition source for the dispersing gasoline that sprayed out of the ruptured tank. Historical records actually show that the Pinto wasn't significantly more dangerous than a lot of other cars produced through the 1970s. Thankfully, those sorts of standards haven't remained the norm. But even these so-called fire trap vehicles didn't produce explosions on the scale of Hollywood. The likely reason is that because the gasoline vapors were released from the ruptured tank and then ignited, they were no longer in an enclosed space and were unable to build up enough pressure to create a huge explosion. Of course, not every car on the road is powered by gasoline. It's going for the vehicle's battery core. It's pure capacitance gel. <laughs> Ignoring the made-up movie terminology, it's pure capacitance gel. Could a real-world electric vehicle produce a Hollywood explosion? Modern EVs are experiencing a boom in popularity, and with the rise in demand has come increased attention and scrutiny. And examples of EVs catching fire and apparently exploding can be found all over the internet. EVs utilize an electric motor and store energy in lithium-ion batteries. In most reported cases of EVs catching fire, the battery is the culprit. Lithium-ion batteries can sometimes experience something called thermal runaway, an increase in temperature that occurs when the heat created by a defective or poorly installed battery exceeds the amount of heat that can be dissipated. This increase in temperature further accelerates the chemical reaction happening within the battery, causing heat to be generated exponentially, which can then propagate uncontrollably from cell to cell. Amongst other things, thermal runaway can be triggered by mechanical shock and has been known to cause spontaneous fires and, more rarely, actual explosions. This might happen because thermal runaway can lead to the emission of toxic and flammable gases, which may collect in what is known as a vapor cloud, especially if the vehicle is in an enclosed space like a garage. In the presence of a heat source, which could be the overheating battery itself, the vapor cloud can ignite and explode. In this case, the battery itself doesn't explode, but the gases that have been released from it, and is therefore known as a vapor cloud explosion, or VCE. Ergo, small malfunctions and collisions can indeed trigger explosions in electric cars. Indeed, when an EV does burn, it often burns hotter and faster than your average fossil fuel car, and can easily end up overwhelmed with fire. Even when the fire has been extinguished, lithium-ion batteries have been known to spontaneously reignite days later. 
However, much like gasoline cars, the likelihood of them happening anyway is pretty remote. In fact, in 2022, an investigation conducted by the Swedish Civil Contingency Agency found that, while fires in all types of cars are rare, gasoline cars catch fire roughly 20 times more often than electric cars. While statistics from the National Transportation Safety Board in the US suggest that electric car fires could be even rarer than that. Still, experts in the automotive industry, such as the principal engineer at the Southwest Research Institute, Graham Conway, said it would be statistically irresponsible to compare the rates of car fires in the NTSB data given the vastly differing sample sizes. Similarly, Chief Technical Officer at Thatcham Research, Richard Billyield, notes that while research suggests that EVs are indeed less likely to catch fire, the usable data only goes back five years. In other words, solid conclusions about the rate of fires in electric cars are still being formed. So, while electric cars can experience explosions, statistically, they're very unlikely to occur. Even when genuine car explosions do occur, in either electric or gasoline-powered cars, they tend to be small and localized to one part of the car, not huge fireballs. It's not surprising that there's so much concern surrounding the safety of electric cars when there's so much misinformation swirling around online. But what if we cast a wider net? What about tankers? What the hell is that? Those large vehicles you sometimes see on the road ferrying around all manner of liquids, including inert substances like water and plant oil, but also more volatile stuff like LPGs or liquid petroleum gases. <laughs> LPGs, such as propane and butane, are fossil fuels used to power vehicles, cook food, and heat homes. As they are gaseous at room temperature, they are kept under pressure for storage and transport, making tankers essentially just enormous rolling versions of regular gas cylinders. So, how likely is it, under normal operating conditions, for one of these tankers to blow up? Once again, the chances of this happening has been somewhat exaggerated by media and entertainment bigwigs. Industry leaders and experts generally agree that when used and stored correctly, LPG is a safe fuel source. Much like vapor cloud explosions, most explosions involving LPG fuel are caused by gas leaking into an enclosed space, which is then somehow ignited. These explosions happen externally and often aren't caused by a fault or failure of the tank itself. Indeed, the tank may not even be damaged at all. Genuine tank explosions are even more rare. However, rare doesn't mean never. And when they do happen, they can be utterly devastating. Because the boiling point of a liquid increases with pressure, LPGs inside a pressurized tank will remain liquid, even if the tank is heated to well above the normal boiling point of its contents. Ergo, if a pressurized LPG tanker somehow ruptures, the sudden drop in pressure causes an equivalent drop in boiling point, meaning the contents will instantly vaporize, expand, and explode. Known as a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, or BLEVI for short, these explosions are considered some of the most dangerous and powerful non-military explosions that can occur. As a result, despite their statistical rarity, reports of powerful blevy explosions often make international news. Notable examples involving LPG tankers include the Charla LPG tanker disaster in 2012, in which an LPG truck collided with a concrete road divider and overturned, resulting in a massive blevy explosion. More recently in South Africa in late 2022, a disaster known as the Boxberg explosion occurred after an LPG tanker crashed and became jammed underneath a railway bridge. It exploded multiple times before a final massive explosion estimated to be almost 80 meters or 250 feet wide. Despite what the news or social media may suggest, it is exceedingly rare for gasoline cars, EVs, or LPG tankers to explode. Pretty much the only time that a car will catastrophically explode in dramatic, cinematic fashion is with the use of explosives, either in the form of car bombs or in the realm of special effects, itself a source of the idea that cars are rolling explosions waiting to happen. Regular passenger cars, whether powered by internal combustion engines or electric 
electric motors simply don't have the capacity to cinematically explode. Explosions involving LPG tankers are also very rare, especially in developed nations with robust regulations on the transport and storage of dangerous goods. When they do explode, however, the blasts can be enormous and extremely dangerous. The best advice we can give you is that if you do see an overturned LPG tanker on fire, don't stick around to watch. We hope you learned something new, and please remember to click on my link in the description to try out the Brilliant app, exercise your brain, and become a master of scientific concepts that would have previously just boggled your mind.